Hey, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be taking a look at what's new in Autodesk Fabrication 2018. My name is Scott Buchanan. I'm a Senior Solutions Consultant for Imagine It, and I will be leading the presentation today. First with our agenda, what we will kick things off with, basically the primary features that are new for 2018 as they relate to the fabrication products. That's going to be CADMEP, SMEP, CAMDUCT, and Revit. Once we go over some talking points related to those features, then I'll go into a live demonstration of the major new features within Revit fabrication in 2018. After those features, just have some closing points to bring about, and I will let you continue with your day. So first up, we're going to take a look at the primary features with Fabrication CAD MEP, SMEP, and CAMDUCT. We'll be getting to the Revit portion of this here in just a moment. So first up <clears throat> is going to be related to hangers. Now this is going to be across the board. We'll see this in SMEP and of course CAD as well as we're using these particular items. So what they've done is included the ability to attach the some of the hanger rod data to the ancillaries. So if we set up our ancillaries in the database, we've got different rod sizes and so forth, we can switch between them on the fly when we go into the properties of that particular item. Now for those that have been using the software in the past, uh, you recall that was a just a diameter value that we would have to change if we wanted a different rod. So again, just kind of giving us some predetermined sizes that we can choose from uh, when we're actually doing our modeling. Next up is going to be some inclusion of new patterns available to us. So when we're doing some modeling and we're coming across additional plenum boxes, they've created two new CIDs for us. They're going to be 1206 and 1207. The difference being uh, an open back versus a, a closed back between those particular uh, patterns themselves. So again, just looking to enhance or, or give some additional options when it comes to modeling or better representing what is getting installed uh, from a design. This was going to be a bigger function on the CAD side of things, even though we do have <clears throat> design line in other areas of the program. Uh, or some of the other applications. With 2018, we're now going to see annotation in vertical runs of design line. So this is going to be information such as flow rates, flow data that's associated with that particular line, or if we're having maybe a problematic uh, button code issue that's popping up. So if something isn't filling in with design line, as uh, happens from time to time, of course, then we can take a look and make sure it's calling up the correct uh, piece of annotation. Then we can go check out our button maps, our button codes, and make sure everything's going to hook up. So we're going to see basically the same data that has always been in horizontal runs. We're now going to have it in the vertical runs. For those checking this out that are new to the fabrication software, this is not annotation in regards to like labeling a pipe or duct run or anything like that. This is purely from uh, kind of a coding standpoint and just informational data that's attached to these lines themselves. On the estimating side of things, so with SMEP 2018, they're looking to enhance stability with PDF files. So of course, common workflow on the estimating side, bringing in a PDF, tracing over the top of it to get that estimate up and running. Now, those who were using 2017.2 probably saw these changes take place as that's when they began to get rolled out. So what we are able to do when importing a PDF file, if it's a single PDF or it's a multi-sheet PDF, you can see from the illustration there, we can go ahead and pull up and choose maybe what sheets from that PDF we want to bring across. Maybe I didn't want... Uh, maybe the border was included, or I'm sorry, the title block, legends. Of course, we don't care about those, so we can kind of filter them out. We also have better results from the scaling of the PDFs. Uh, so we can either establish that at a global level, or we can go on a sheet-by-sheet -sheet basis as well. So maybe a couple of the plans are 
three sixteenths and others are at eight scale, you could go sheet by sheet and make that particular change. So just giving you another way to scale these PDF files as opposed to manually scaling them with you know, the AES command once you get inside of SMEP, we can go ahead and do it ahead of time now. On the CAM side, and again, this does carry over on the CAD side. If I'm setting up labels and, and reports and some of those things, uh, item worksheets, we've got the ability to have <clears throat> a new user-defined field as it relates to the parts. In this particular example, they're doing it from a, a QR code being attached to it, so just embedding additional data to those particular labels here. So again, just more flexibility from a reporting standpoint, sending this thing out the door and getting it out to the field to be installed. Now moving into the Revit fabrication side of things, this is where we saw some really major enhancements with 2018. We've seen a, a very fast track of functions and features being added to the fabrication parts since they were included in 2016 Revit and has continued to grow through 17, 17.2, and now 18. We've hit some major wish list items. So <clears throat> in the past, when we were modeling with our fabrication content, we were placing it from a CAD map standpoint or terminology with the attacher method. Basically, we're assembling things piece by piece uh, to lay it out. Then in 2017 and point two, they started to introduce the route and fill tools, basically giving us some automatic filling to an extent of Piper Duct. But now with 2018, they're looking to have the actual fabrication parts behave more like normal Revit families. So normal Revit families, pipe duct, you're just drawing from point A to B to C and it's filling it in. Now 2018, we have multi-point routing with the items which will behave very similar. So again, looking to speed up that modeling process within Revit using the fabrication content. you will notice that there is a new tool that will basically activate this feature. So if I have a particular service set up, uh, ready to go with, I enable that multi-point routing and we're gonna see that we can start taking off with it and just letting it do its thing there. Another big item that was added for 2018 is the ability to slope the fabrication content. In 2017 and with 16, we did not have this particular feature. Now with 2017, there was a workflow or kind of work around. We could draw it with normal Revit, say sanitary piping that's you know got a quarter inch slope or pitch on it, and then use the design to fabrication tool and have it convert it to the fabrication content and it would maintain that slope. But then if you were going in and, and wanting to edit things after the fact, you know, it didn't behave so well. Now with 2018, again, similar to the multi-point routing behaving like normal Revit content, this sloping functionality is looking to do the same thing. So you'll see a bit of a familiar pull down <clears throat> list there where they've got the pre-built slope values that we can go ahead and choose from and just start laying it out to have that slope already in there. And we're gonna see connectivity is going to work well. So as I start to you know, if I run a line down, I start snapping to it or, or dropping into it, it is going to maintain those slope values as we would expect it to. So again, some major changes from a modeling standpoint to make this more usable from the construction side of things and, and how it's going to get installed, being able to model faster with the multi-point routing and then now those that are doing sanitary pipe or even some exterior you know, process type piping that would require a slope, we're gonna have that ability well without having to do a conversion. And those are gonna be some of the features that I show in my demonstration, which is gonna go ahead and come up now. So as I share my Revit 2018 over with you, what I've done at this point in time is just preloaded a couple of services. So right now I have uh, sanitary service loaded in, that way I can demonstrate the slow piping here in a moment. Then I've got just <clears throat> a two inch, a negative two inch pressure class duct service, and then I've got just a chilled water that's running um, 
you know, some copper and grooved or copper and welded fittings together. So let's take a look with the ductwork first. That's what we'll kind of kick off with to see this multi-point routing. So the method that we had previously, again, was more of that, as we call it in CAD map, uh, the attacher method. I would have to come over here and assemble this piece by piece. So basically it was, I'm choosing my straight, I'm attaching it to whatever equipment that I have, and I'm kind of building this thing as I go along. And then telling it what particular fitting I want to go with it. And then again, kind of putting it in there as well. Now, we could speed it up a little bit. I could grab it and stretch it. You know, it gives me that full length, and then I could come back and say, hey, I want to optimize those links. And that looks at my fabrication database that hopefully you've set up around your shop standards and it's going to have standard straight links uh, being placed into it. So even though there were some speed enhancements available to us, we want it to be faster and we want it to behave more like, again, traditional Revit content. So with 2018, here's the new behavior that you're going to have available to you. I would look to enable my multi-point routing. So here's that new tool that's going to be available for us. And once I start that up, just as I would do a piece of a pipe or duct coming off of equipment with pure Revit content, I'm gonna do the same thing. So as I come over, making sure I'm on my rectangular or my round based upon my connection, when I come off with it, I'm gonna to start to draw this and you are gonna do the full run, right? So let's say I'm taking this thing all the way down through here. <clears throat> get it placed. Maybe I initially start to move it a little closer, you know, to that return diffuser. And again, it's going to do those full links because it's just letting you kind of do that full run. And then we can come back after the fact, reselect it all and say, hey, go ahead and optimize those links. Here's where I'm coming in with, you know, my 59 inch, 56 and a quarter inch straights. Again, whatever my shop standard set up for. Now, when I optimize this, I can see I've got those standard straight links in there and any bit of overage that's in there. Not that this is a new feature of 2018, but if I didn't want to do that shortcut, I don't know how long that is, but if I didn't want to do that shortcut, you know, I could get rid of it, grabbing this piece and just doing normal Revit operations on it, right? So doing my moves, reconnecting that, <clears throat> that way I have that, I think these are 411s, you know, having those 411 links getting dropped in there. Now, if that put me too close, then you know maybe I wouldn't do that. Now, with carrying out that multi-point routing to do my branches, so let's say I wanted to start uh, with the long side over here first. So again, I'll enable that multi-point routing. Make sure my shape is set. So I've got my round. <clears throat> I'm going to come off of here. We'll see it does the auto, you know, kind of snapping pickup of what I had over there. As I click on it, I know that I'm on a big piece because I was using 12 inch uh, a moment ago. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that to be, uh, these are six inch diffusers. So as I come off of that, we can connect right down to it just like we would with normal Revit duct, right? So that's running rigid the whole way, dropping down into it, tying it into the diffuser. And based upon how your fabrication database is set up, that's going to dictate, for example, what types of taps, shoes, bell mouse, you know, it's going to go in there. This particular one, I have it set up to come in with a damper automatically. Again, it's completely up to you when you do that configuration. And again, just kind of continuing that process, right? So again, like normal, and eh, I don't like how close that is, but that's fine for now. Snap into it. Yeah, I really couldn't fit with that location. I knew it was going to run into it right there. So didn't actually like it being so close. Well, let's say I wanted to come off with this a certain distance and then I wanted to go flex right so I could start up that multi-point routing again let's say I snap midpoints fine and I stop here again there's that multi-point routing and then I'm gonna go with my flex making my connections to kind of carry that out so again speed enhancements with it we're still going to use traditional methods of, of placing in different types of things uh, you know, that'd be really close trying to <clears throat> to branch off. Maybe I'd want to do it. Let's just do it for demonstration purposes. Right? So we can see it's coming in there, making that connection. Or again, just to try to show, hey, this is very similar to, to modeling. 
with Revit if I change my mind after the fact and I'm going to come out of there with Flex. Again, just finding those connection points and making it happen. Same thing with running pipe. If I want to run pipe with that whole route to fill scenario, I'm going to do the exact same thing there as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make my connections here. So right now this just has normal Revit copper pipe on it. So a feature that was added in 2017 was the ability to convert this stuff right on the fly. So if I'm going to continue this with fabrication content, I'm going to go ahead and create what I have or convert what I have right here. So looking at this, I was just got a T then a reducer to get down this half inch. I don't really like that. So we'll see what the conversion does when we send it to a fabrication service. So I'm just going to go ahead and select enough of this run. T it's got it picked up. Run design to fabrication and let's go ahead and convert it. And we'll see a little more realistic that it went ahead and switched it to a reducing T and it went in I think I have these as Nibco tees, yeah. So I went ahead and switched it out for that Nibco content as opposed to those generic fittings. And now I can pick up and run with my multi-point fill. Now I'm gonna show something real quick just because this is normal behavior of Revit. So I wanna keep drawing from that point and I wanna snap down to the, uh, the coil on the other one. Notice how it doesn't pick up any automatic snaps with those connectors. This is just a normal behavior. So here's a little bonus tip for you. The reason it doesn't pick up the snapping of the connectors is because when you started to draw the pipe, or duct would even be the same case, it couldn't see the connector. So it actually has to see it on the screen for you to be able to draw to it. So if that's ever driven you wild as far as why it's not always giving you the auto tracking, it's because it didn't see it when you started the command. Watch the difference now. I pick it up, it recognizes all the connection points. So again, that's just a normal Revit functionality, not 2018. So I could come down. Uh, maybe I don't want to stop there. I want to go all the way to the other one. So let's say I just carry it off, you know, just a little bit. So I do my multi-point fill. Then I come back. Uh, I know that's a half inch connection on there. So I'm just going to switch to a half inch with my multi-point, come out and connect to it like I would with Revit piping. Right, and it's thrown in that same reducing T, and I could go hook up that other equipment downstream uh, if I'm worried about it right now. I would come back and run that whole optimized links because it doesn't put any couplings or joints or anything like that. So once I go through and do the optimize, looks like right, yep, it went ahead through that coupling in there. So whatever your you know your ordering sticks of pipe are, 20 foot, 21 foot, 10 foot, and so on, it's going to go ahead and attach those for you. So again, that's using that multi-point routing to speed up running out of my pipe or duct with the fabrication content. Next up, I want to show you the sloped piping. So let's jump to a sanitary plan here <clears throat> that I've cleaned up a little bit. So with the sanitary plan, we're going to start off a little bit the same, getting our actual parts ready to go. So to get it ready, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my correct fabrication service. So I just have a no-hub service set up here where I'm going to run this sanitary pipe and show you guys sloping. Now with <clears throat> the slope piping, there's a couple different ways to kind of lay it out, whatever feels best to you. Similar to if you were drawing slope pipe with traditional Revit pipe. Some like to work in a plan view. Uh, maybe you want to go into a section view or maybe a combination of the two. So let's say I wanted to open up a section looking each way. Right, I'm looking to the side there and then maybe looking horizontal. That way I can show you that it is actually sloping uh, when I get to, to that point there. And I'll just go ahead and tile these <clears throat> views to get this set up here. So whether I'm going to do it in plan or not, it's up to me. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it in a little bit of a section. I'll kind of bounce around a little bit to show you how you can kind of control this. So let's say I want to start off with the normal routing of pipe. So maybe I don't have <clears throat> or I'm not ready for sloping at this point in time, but I want to come back and slope it after the fact. So I can come in here, start up my multi-point routing. And I'm snapping onto the connector coming out of the back here. So once I come out of this, uh, getting a set distance for now, we'll go 15 is enough. And then kind of where we want to uh, drop down to as well. 
So I've got drop down to a point, and again, we'll be able to press and pull on this stuff to drop it lower or bring it back up if we need to as well. So I've got the drop in there. Obviously, just because I chose to do it in this view, I can't continue that run. So if I want to jump over to my next view and go into the multi-point routing and the right click, you know, I can just put this going down through there. Again, this is sloped at this point in time, right? I can see it's in there, <clears throat> no pitch to it whatsoever. So if I want to come back after the fact and do it, I can select on that run and we're going to have basically a slope editor right here. So similar to what we would see on normal Revit pipe. So as I enable that slope, coming back over, you're going to have slope values that you can choose from the pull down. So I've got a quarter inch set there and those are set up in mechanical settings. So that is the same slope value and pull down options that you have with regular pipe as well. So once that's chosen, go ahead and finish that and I can see it's going to sign that slope. And then I can start to drop this down. You'll get that hub out of the floor. Obviously whatever distance feels good. I can do it over here in my properties as well to drop it down a set distance, but uh, that's going to get me enough. And now if I look at this run <clears throat> going down through there, I can see it actually has that slope assigned to it. And then from there, if I want to connect into it, let's say I go back and do uh, the multi-point routing in my plan view. So I'll go ahead and start up multi-point routing, snap into my connection point, and then we can see what's going on in this section view right here. So based upon however my service is set up, my service is going to dictate what fitting is going to get placed in there by default. So that's just going ahead and throwing in that combo uh, for me. So if I want to keep going down through there, same thing. And it's not caring about that slope and it's still making, making those connections down through there. Now, I could have, if I wanted to, came in and placed a piece of pipe with slope and then started connecting into it, right? I've got this room filled right now, this restroom filled, but if I were to click on the pipe, uh, not doing the multi-point routing, taking a look, you could see you have slope values here where you're setting it up or down or you've got it off, getting your value set right there, and then wherever you're going to set that pipe, obviously it'd be best in a plan view, so as I'm going around, and let's drop this kind of low just so we can see it there. So I'll go minus three foot. Might drop out of the plan view here, but we'll see it over in the section view. Yeah, a little bit out of there. So I dropped out because my view range is set in that plan view to be a certain distance down. But as I'm getting that set, uh, right there it is. You know, we can just drop that piece in there and then start connecting to it. So it's, it's kind of whichever way you want to go with it, whether you like to do things in section view, whether you like to get your, um, you know, main slope set in there first and then start dropping down and tying into it. You know, you could do that as well. Now, something similar after I get this system set up um, with that multi point routing, I can do, depending on how I want to do the venting. So I know that was adding the slope. This is a little bit off to the side, but just to show there is a setting available uh, that we can control things and, and how this is going to connect. So if I look at this connection here, and let's say I wanted a, a sanitary T there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of blow this away and get going up there. Now, if I do my multi-point routing, it's going to look at what's been set up as my default for that service. So if I were to do that, it's just going to put in a, a traditional combo not what I want in that particular scenario. You can manually place a sanitary tee or a certain fitting, drop it in there. That's a little bit more time consuming. I'm going to undo that and show you what we can also do. If I come over to my service palette here, lower left hand corner, we have our autofill tools. Okay, so this is basically setting up to where we can say, hey, we do not want to use this particular fitting or fittings in this autofill of the piping multi-point routing is considered autofill. So this little button here is not new in 18, but just to show it does work in conjunction with the new feature in 2018 of multi-point routing. So what I could do is come in here and say, hey, I don't want to use a combo on this. Say I'm ready to run, go ahead and choose my multi-point routing. And as I bring it over, 
it's going to use that fitting instead. So kind of on the fly, you can have your defaults set in place, but you can always bypass them, right? I can go in there and exclude them, and that multi-point routing, which is new for 2018, will go ahead and recognize those settings. So I could go through there, put in sanitary tees. Um, you know, if I had actual vent tees in there, clean outs, <clears throat> you know, I could go ahead and start to swap those out as I need to as well. So that all works with that slope system that I started to put in there with the sanitary pipe that we can see there as well. Now, you can edit those slope values here as well. Again, driving them through the dialogues, what we do most often, but we can see that it does have that slope assigned to it. So again, new modeling capabilities with Revit 2018 for fabrication parts. We've got the ability to now slope our fabrication parts. We don't have to do a convert anymore. And then also the ability with the multi-point routing which was allowing us to quickly and more efficiently place in the fabrication content with an auto filling behavior as we're doing our actual runs. Now that is going to conclude the live presentation of the fabrication 2018 portion. And what I would like to mention in closing here is that through Imagine It, we do have multiple options related to the fabrication products when it comes to implementation strategies and training as well. So we do have the ability to kind of get an understanding of what your business needs on the fabrication side of things. Maybe you don't have a shop uh, in-house, maybe you're sending stuff out we can assist with best practices for that or you do have a shop in house so we can start to look at better ways to integrate from upstairs to downstairs per se and getting machines installed sending out burning directly from those models that we're creating and we're able to do that through various optimization services that are available so we can get an understanding of what type of machines you have what type of environment that you have and then look to optimize a fabrication configuration for you. Once that optimization has taken place, then we can actually apply training around that particular workflow. At the same time, supporting as issues arise and things like that to kind of carry you through it. So we do have custom training services available for the fabrication content within Revit. Also fabrication CAD MEP, SMEP, and CAMDUCT along with full implementations of those products to get you up and running. If you would like more information about our services or any additional products via Autodesk, please visit us at imagine.com slash contact us. And I would like to thank you for your time today. Again, my name was Scott Buchanan, Senior Solutions Consultant for Imagine It. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you.